the spring of 2017, one of the largest outbreaks of measles in recent years took place in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The disease had been virtually eradicated at the turn of the century through increased vaccinations. Unfortunately, many new cases were reported last year that spanned multiple weeks, reaching up to 75 cases, most of them being unvaccinated Somali children. This made the Somali community the epicenter of the outbreak and brought an unwanted spotlight that was harshly critical. In this piece, we hope to explore the key factors that played a role in last year's outbreak by speaking to those who were involved in the public health front and to the people some say might have caused the outbreak with their misinformation. Through it, we hope to discover where the breakdown of trust occurred between the Somali community and the public health officials and how the concern of autism is deeply tied into last year's measles outbreak. I first sat down with Mark Blacksell in order to get a better understanding of where this claim of the MMR vaccine causing autism came from. Black Soul is an author of multiple books that cover the subject of autism, and in 2012, he testified before a congressional committee to raise awareness on the increasing rates of autism in the United States. As health officials were tackling the outbreak, Black Soul spoke to the Somali community about the dangers of the MMR vaccine. There were folks in the Somali community that reached out okay. to the Vaccine Safety Council and said, you know, we'd like, we are be being bullied mm -hmm. uh, in the midst of this, you know, modest outbreak of measles. We are being bullied by the Minnesota Department of Health okay. to vaccinate our children uh, under duress, ahead of schedule, mm -hmm. uh, uh, without, you know, without the right of exemption, without the right to choose. And we would like our community to be aware of our rights. Okay. So that was, it was a request that came to the Vaccine Safety Council. And because I had done some research on the, the, the what the so-called Disneyland outbreak of yep. measles. I was up to date on the problem of measles outbreaks, and my friends in the Vaccine Safety Council uh, invited me here mm -hmm. uh, to speak, um, and so that's why I came. You know, I, I have been involved with the group in Minnesota here, uh, the Vaccine Safety Council, mm -hmm. um, which is very interested in defending the, the rights of Minnesota parents uh, to to exercise uh, you know uh, choice. Uh, their choice uh, around vaccinations mm -hmm. you know, for their children, um, I've come to believe that uh, there is, you know the connection between uh, autism and and vaccines is that there is one uh, that it's not the only explanation for the increase in autism. We know, for example, that there are unvaccinated children who develop autism. But, uh, but there is undeniable evidence that there is a causal relationship in some children uh, between a vaccine exposure or a set of vaccines and a regressive outcome of autism. Many of the reports at the time put blame on Black Soul and other vaccine safety advocates due to the decline in vaccinations among Somalis. According to health officials, the lack of vaccinating against measles made the Somali community vulnerable to an outbreak. Um, I believe that, that, that is a, they played a very big role in this. Um, I, I do protest the issue of calling them safety advocates because vaccines have shown over and over again that they are safe. They are not 100% safe. Just like a medicine that we give our ch child is not 100% safe, um, but we would not be giving vaccines to children if they were not safe. We don't want our children to get sick from measles because that's not, that is by far more dangerous um, to our children. Patty Carroll of the Vaccine Safety Council also pushed back on this notion. She says that the Somali community was fearful of the risks that they saw from the MMR vaccine well before their organization engaged with them. The characterization of, you know, blaming, you know, anti-vaccine groups for the outbreak is uh, perfect. I mean, that's definitely how they are trying to spin this. But my history has been that the Somali families knew what happened to their children long before I ever met any of them or any of our groups were involved. And the rates 
of uptake of the MMR was already dropping um, because people had, had talked amongst themselves and said, you know, they all saw their children or neighbors' children or, you know, relatives regress after the MMR vaccine and said, we're not going to do that one. Mm -hmm. You know, that one seems to be harming our kids and we're not going to do it. To get a better sense of how some Somali parents could avoid getting the MMR vaccine for their children, I sat down with a father who believed that that vaccine is what caused his son to now have autism. Okay. Okay. Um, in our work with um, parents and in some of the, the um, exploration of this issue among parents, we have heard that parents do um, a risk assessment. They, they do look at, you know, um, what I've heard is that this vaccine causes autism and Autism is something that um, is something that my child would have to live with for the rest of their life. Whereas they think about measles, well, it's not in Minnesota, so I don't have to worry about measles. But um, and when they've heard messages like children die from measles, they they say, well, death is in the hands of Allah, and so they 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 dismiss that as um, a risk that they're not choosing. They're choosing. Um, something that they have to deal with for the rest of their life. So we have we have are very familiar with that kind of risk decision. Hada wa hna lalayi hai anaga and wa halaydin talalaya and wa yo and community ko ordam ba isko da hada hada ni di kalaydin talalin arur tamay rakti kala chade aku daisa. Merka anu wa hna doran na labar debato wa we ina anu kala doran no o ma rakti ta ukeno yo talal ko anu aragne. یا که چه دعاه دم چه دعاه دو قفس تو سومالی وی کرد عادی یه حنون دن کلی با لکی س کن آن انگرانی و مارکت دیبات دیسو ای کوی انتهای مارکت که چه دعاه دی کرد عادا قف کو آموزون ولاده آموزون دن تای لحی بعروت بهیه مرکا وحنا آمین سنهای آنو وسا آمین سن این حدنا داد که دخاتیر تا یا داد که لش قیست تا یا داد که دوین کس میگه أنا دعات كأهين كم أنا كرسونين هذا والدين تناهي وأي واحد نعرفني واحد رنتا رنتا إيو ماركتي واحد ماركتي ده كأي عن دخاتير تأهينينا أي شيء كأنه واكل دفن. Taking from what we've learned here, the Department of Health was able to stop the measles outbreak in its tracks, and fortunately, none of the cases resulted in death. The Minnesota Department of Health now has a system in place to respond to the next outbreak which will serve them well since a significant part of the Somali community still fears the MMR vaccine. Unfortunately, this makes the community ripe for another outbreak, unless the public health officials can continue to build that trust. Um, we, we can only do what we know. Um, I think that what we weren't understanding is how much the fear of autism impacted the refusal of vaccination. And, how we, we are still trying to figure out ways we can support parents who have children with autism. And a lot of that role is played in the Department of Human Services rather than the, the health department um, because they are the ones that have the resources, the, the programs, um, the Department of Education. The only way that we can restore that trust will be to show the Somali community that they're dedicated to finding a solution to autism and providing the resources necessary for parents raising children with that condition. One of the things that I've learned from my, from my colleagues who are Somali here at the Minnesota Department of Health is a, is a proverb, a Somali proverb. When the truth gets out, or when the lie gets out, the truth cannot catch it.